Well, hello, everybody. I didn't know my voice would get that high. It's Donnie. from Comedy Advice Podcast, and I'm coming in with that fresh morning energy. It's a Monday, and I am going to carpe the F out of that DM. And I hope you guys are carpeing that DM as well. I don't like the phrase. I feel like it's old, so I'm going to use a new one. I don't, well, I guess Drake already did the yo low. So I'm going to be like, yo, hi, because you got to stay high all the time. And I'm not talking about the cannabis. I'm talking about that cannabis, you know, just that natural cannabinoid chemical that your body produces that you just, it brings you euphoria. And I hope you guys are harnessing that. I hope you isolated it. You're like, Hey, it's in my central torso area. And I'm just going to stimulate that until, Oh, I just did like a Matthew McConaughey thing. And we're, Wolves of Wall Street. It wasn't that, didn't he do that? Well, maybe just Wolf of Wall Street. There weren't many wolves. And also, wolves isn't the plural of wolf. So, am I Canadian now? Because I think, don't they have the maple leaves? So, anyway, Wolves of Wall Street. Let's chow down on this episode, shall we, Wolf Pack? As your alpha, I will lead you in and say, hey, be careful. There's a new wolf a coming into this pack. And his name is David A. Arnold. He is a triple threat in comedy. He's a writer, comedian, producer. You guys probably saw his special Fat Ballerina on Netflix. It was trending for many moons. I'm not sure how many moons. I think Netflix said 47 moons. It, it was, there were like two full moon cycles. So I think if you see it when it's right at the crescent moon it's at its funniest but it's still funny no matter what moon stage you watch it at guaranteed that's the netflix guarantee it's just they have this seal of consistency because the moon does fluctuate my wife she actually this is not a joke but she cuts her hair uh depending on the moon cycle because it gets fuller on one stage it grows faster in another stage i'm not sure because i you know have this luscious flowing hair so i guess i get my hair cut right at the right moon cycle every time so i guess i am just a uh lunar lunar tick you know but hey it's daytime not night so let's put that moon to rest shall we and talk about david a arnold the new wolf howling good time is what we had. He is an incredibly inspirational person. And we talk a little bit about his journey, about his life, his inspiration, and just the great work that he does. He teaches as well. And he has the fat ballerina, which I told you, well, he doesn't have a fat ballerina, but the special, he has another special coming out on Netflix coming soon. And he's also a writer on the Nickelodeon show, that girl Lele, which is hilarious. I watched a couple of clips. It's a really well written show. And the main star, she's this TikTok star and dancer and rapper, and she's really talented. It makes me extremely depressed because she's like, what, 12? And I'm 33 years old. And I'm sitting here in a studio talking to myself. Hopefully, you guys are listening. I don't know. You guys zone out sometimes. I hope, hey, snap back into it. Okay, Charlie we have stuff to talk about. I mean, I have stuff to talk about, but if you want to talk back at me, there are ways. You can subscribe, leave a review, and comment on YouTube, follow me on, on Instagram, Twitter, all those social media platforms, TikTok. Um, guess what? Old Steffi's on the TikTok now, ticking and talking. And so you guys can talk back to me. So we can have a little tick, a little talk, a little tick for tech. I don't know how the saying goes. We're going to renovate it just like we do with Carpe Diem. But you guys can do that. And, uh, you know, it's really important that you do that. And I love all the people that have done that so far. And guess what? We've had some reviews coming in on Apple Podcasts, which helps me climb those charts rung by rung. And you guys are helping hold the ladder sturdy. Okay? You guys are there making sure I climb onto the roof of Apple Podcasts so I can uh, retile it. And, and shout from the rooftops, hey, a comedy advice podcast is pretty good. And I'm going to read the latest review for you guys. This one, it's five stars and it goes. That's right. You're hearing silence because they didn't write anything, but they left the five stars. So that's okay. And that, that you know what, that just as much helps me. I like to talk. Obviously, I'm on a podcast. So the less talking you guys do, the better. I'm just kidding. I want to hear you guys talk more. Please let me know what you think. Leave a review. 
and say hi at the very least. Um, if you need a starter for your review, be like, Stefan is, and then go from there. Whatever your mind and heart tells you, mostly your heart. I don't care what your mind says. Your mind is meaningless. Your heart leads you to the right places all the time, every time. That's what every single movie ever has taught me. And Hollywood is my scripture. David A. Arnold was a fantastic guest, and I want you guys to support him as well. If you can, please go follow him on Instagram. Send him a DM. Be like, hey, I loved you on a comedy advice podcast. <laughs> I just watched the Many Saints of Newark, so I'm still in that, you know, mafia vibe. You know, he's a strong, he's a marum. So, you know, you just forget about it. Don't forget about it. Go over there and tell him you like him. And then you Phoenicians, he's going to be in Phoenix this weekend. Link is going to be in the show notes. You can just crawl on over there. Not desperately, but like a sexy crawl. So you can crawl over there. And then you can click on that link and you can order tickets and then you can see them live. So how about them? Grapefruits. We're a citrus state. We don't do apples here. Guys, the time is approaching. One day until Trash Your Treasure, my second live show with Lamar Mitchell JR, where we're going to go tournament style. We're bringing on comedians and they're going to battle it out to decide if certain topics that Lamar and I have thought about are trash or treasure. Like, I don't know. Man buns, beautiful green eyes, beards. I'm just naming things that I have. You know, are they trash or treasure? I'm basically going to be decided if I'm trash or treasure on the show. And you guys help decide. You have to show up. Link is going to be in the show notes and the audience decides who wins, who loses. So it's up to you guys. I am desperate here. Please save me. Please come and show what a treasure I am, or maybe trash, because you guys are all treasures, and I trust your opinion. Whatever you decide, I accept that fate. Like a modern gladiator that podcasts instead of gladiates, I moderate, okay? I moderate conversation. That's how I take my tongue as my sword, and I battle it out against some of the best. Just, uh, 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 I stuck my tongue out for all of you that missed that glorious moment on the audio mediums. Anyway, in the name of the Holy Hollywood, I'm going to let you guys stop listening to me and start listening to me. Hey, David, how are you? Yeah, well, how are you? I'm doing well, doing really well. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for doing this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you as well. I love the the background, by the way. It looks great. Very nicely framed oh. and uh, oh, smartly well, well, placed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot of That's work great. went into that. I didn't do that, but my interior designer, she did that. She's very good. Oh, very nice. My interior designer is now my wife. She actually came to me today and was <laughs> like, I want to redo your studio because it looks like <laughs> there's some constructive criticism. That's great. I also, I really like the glasses. I don't wear glasses, but I do admire people oh, that thanks. do, and I like the the clear ones. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I thank you, man. I I have a I have a few of them, but you know, I just rotate them like depending on whichever one is closer. I'm like, oh, I'll put that on. How long are we do it? It's usually about 30 to 45, but I can cut it short if you've got any time constraints. No, no, let's let, let's just go and see how how it goes. Nice. Yeah. We'll go with the flow. If it's horrible, we'll do 20 minutes and uh if it's good, we'll do a little longer. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think that's a good note to start. No pressure at all. But hello everybody, welcome to a comedy advice podcast. I'm Stefan Satani and joining me today, very special guest, triple threat of comedy. He's a stand-up comedian, writer, and producer. Everybody, please welcome David A. Arnold. Clap, clap, clap. Yes. Hype, hype, hype. <laughs> uh, I need, I feel that the clap is so, it's so gentle. I need like a thunderous noise. Maybe I'll have to put it in a post just to. <laughs> to... Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A thunderous lion's roar, like with MGM. Hilarious. But uh, David, it's, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you Thank so you. much for joining. Um, I, I wanted to talk with you about so many things, but first off, I wanted to talk with you about um, your most recent special that I enjoyed on Netflix and many other people have, Fat Ballerina. Oh, wow. Thanks. It was so, so funny. And I know that it was actually trending when it came out. And I think it still is trending, but, and it came out along with, uh, there was like the Pete Davidson it was competing with and- girl. And uh, Taylor Tomlinson. I self-produced three before well no the, i did one in 1999 it came out in 2000 that was a cd a comedy cd at the time 
that was produced uh -huh. by Uproar Entertainment Records. Uh, it was called Because I Gotta Go to Work in the Morning. That was the very first one I did. Then I did two independents myself. That was, I did one with a friend of mine named Rodney Perry that we both did a half hour and we put it on one DVD called uh, Light Skin, Dark Skin. And then we did another one. Then I did another one called I've Never Heard of You Either, which is just a night me recording myself like at a random comedy club in the South somewhere maybe 10 years ago. And then mm -hmm. this Fat Ballerina was also an independent but it was the first time it got, I've got national distribution being Netflix. So it went up for the world to see. And that's why mine came out when Taylor Tomlinson and uh, Pete Davidson did, because mine was not a Netflix original. Theirs was. Netflix actually did their specials. I did mine myself. Kevin Hart put his name on it and we got it sold and distributed by Netflix. So that was the journey of those different ones. This one that I'm about to do in January, the new one, this is a Netflix original. This is, in their mind, they consider this is the first special that I'm doing because I'm doing it with them. Even though technically I've done, yes, this will be the fifth time I've recorded myself, but the first time that it's being done uh, on this level. Mm, it's I a see, long explanation. No, hey, but a good and important one as well. And and I, I had heard on a couple other interviews too that you were saying that as well. You self-produced. You um, did it in your hometown in Cleveland, Ohio and hired a film crew and everything, edited it yeah. and um, were able to get it on Netflix. And I thought like after, after hearing that, but and also having already viewed the special, I did not think that its quality was any any lesser, any, um, any feeling really right. of any level of that. Yeah, thank you. I made sure that we hit all the specs that Netflix used. I made sure I knew exactly what they needed, how much they needed and when. Uh, so that gave me a little bit of insight of, you know, what my target was. And, you know, it's right, just, right. I have a great manager, um, Dave Becky over at Three Arts Entertainment is, um, you know, he's a monster and when you have him and kevin hart behind you you know pushing your product it, it it gives you a little bit of a boost and i think this next one is probably going to feel the same because uh kevin is also producing this next one but this time lena waith who is a powerhouse television producer has joined the team and she's leading it up and we're also doing a documentary portion to the stand-up special as well so you get an hour of the stand-up and about 10 to 15 minutes of documentary behind the scenes footage of me getting prepared for the stand up, this new one. Oh man, that's so cool to hear. That's really cool. Yeah, the, very excited. The, and one of the cool things that I think about you being a triple threat, being a writer, producer, and stand up is, I mean, you get to see some of that seep through in each thing that you're kind of doing. And in Fat Ballerina, mm -hmm. I felt like I saw in, the stand up your performance is phenomenal your your charisma and stage presence and everything and then also the thank writing you. thank you the way the way that you're just able to take the perspectives of say your wife when you're talking about going on the cruise and you're like i know what she's going to think when she busted her foot and i'm going to get her that neely thing anyway uh, yes. or yes <laughs> or or your daughter when you're talking about the icing on the cake and you're like you know i you i would lie about everything it would be like i didn't do it was the first thing that came out of my mouth but your daughter is like yeah i hate it and it's so cool to see how you're able to take different perspectives of people and um i i know also you are writing for a new show that girl lele that's on nickelodeon and it's just these different perspectives that you're able to yeah. write for are incredible and i wanted to ask how, how do you dive into other people's perspectives or how do you kind of take that other side and 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 find out what how other people think i think that it you know that girl lele is a show that's on nickelodeon it premiered this past thursday um, it, it, it scored very highly in the ratings. It's doing great. It will, uh, you know, when people see my, my standup special and then they go, this guy's doing kids TV because it's my standup special is so raw. It's so adult. I talk about some very adult <laughs> things in that and Nickelodeon is very, 
you know, kids friendly PC. But I think the reason that I'm able to hit all of these perspectives is because I'm not just one note. I don't just do one thing. I, I don't need to be edgy to be funny. I can be edgy mm -hmm. and funny and I can be all the way kid friendly and be funny because I believe funny is funny. If you know funny, you can do funny at any level, not just in one lane. And also I've, when you know, when you've lived life, I've pretty much played all the roles. I know the, I've been a child, not an, I've even been an, an 11 year old or 10 year old girl, but I've been a 10 year old boy and I've been a 10 year old yeah. child. So I know how they think. I've been married long enough to know what's coming. Like you just, some of the stuff is just experience and you just get better. The more you do it, you get better at speaking from those perspectives. You know what I mean? And I think that's probably what makes it easy for me because I've just been, because I'm constantly looking for the other perspective anyway. That's to me, that's the goal in a lot of the standup. Yeah, that that's a really good point. And that's a good insight and to the point of you being able to cater to or, or write these different perspectives for different audiences. <laughs> I know that on social media, a, a lot of the stuff that you post very family oriented. I remember that yes. um, video that that blew up about uh, you and your wife. You're dropping your kids off for their first day of school. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I did that video. Me and my wife did a video a couple years ago, which was how parents feel on their kids first day back to school. And we laid it to some music from the soundtrack of the movie The Wiz. I think it can you feel a brand new day. And I remember posting that video at eight o'clock in the morning here in LA. And by noon here in LA, it was on the news. They were planning on the morning news. And because it got picked up in LA, it got picked up by like 30 other affiliates around the country. And the next thing you know, the, the, the video was all around the country at all of these local, you know, news stations playing everywhere. And it just that was like the launch thing that just like exploded my social media into another gear. Man, that, that is crazy. I, I heard you talking about it on a interview somewhere where you're following you on Instagram and went from like 1200 followers to 75,000 or something insane. Oh yeah. Really. In the beginning it jumped from 12 to 75 quick, you wow. know, and now we're at, you know, I'm, I think I'm only like at 225, but like that, and between between Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, like I'm over a million followers. And it's something that started, you know, 12, it's something that started two years ago, you know? And it's, you know, and I also realized that that tool, the social media tool is a necessity to help people want to come out and see you perform as well, which is also a, and it comes from that. I see. I see. Yeah, absolutely. And and one thing I was going to ask too is, have you found, I know that you were, the, the material on your social media is a little bit more family oriented, let's say, and then the stand up very raw um, mm -hmm. is with Fat ba mm -hmm. Ballerina. Did you find mm -hmm. that there was, were, was an overlap in the audience or, or the overlap in interest or was it separate or people were, were I, thinking, wow, I, this is a little different than what I expected? I think both. I think there's people who saw my, who got to know me through social media and then they saw the stand up. And I've, I've definitely had people who email me and like, oh my gosh, I don't like the cursing and I don't like the way you say this and say that and talk about those things. It's so different than your, than what you do on social media. And I'm like, then just watch me on social media. Don't look yeah. at the stand up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then there's people who know my stand up and they see, I, I think it's, I think it's less of a shock for people to, get to know who get to know me on my social media and come to my stand up than the people who get to know me on my stand up and go to social media. Does that make mm, sense? It does. It does. Yeah. 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 So it, you know, but I, for, at the end of the day, I just do me and whoever likes they like, and whoever wants to watch both, they watch and whoever don't, you don't, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's so cool that you're able to, to, there's just a certain skill in being able to build these audiences from different types of comedy that you're doing. It almost, strangely enough, it reminds me of my mom, you know, we, I have a certain way with her and then she goes to yes. my comedy shows and she's like, dear Lord, I'm going to pray for you. And so <laughs> I, I definitely the get the, the difference, the difference there. It's but. a different relationship and it, 
And just because you do something in one, you know, it, does, it, it, it doesn't mean you have to be in one gear all the time. I could be in many different gears. You know, right. my stand-up can be in many different gears. So it's not, you know, it, I, can, I can do the family thing and I can get on stage and be raw. Right. And I can write a kid's TV show and I'm developing adult TV shows as well. So it doesn't, it, 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 I feel like when you know your voice, I can adjust it to wherever I'm working and performing at. Yes. Yes. And, and I did forget to mention, I did see a couple clips of uh, that girl, Lele and wow, good show. And then she, oh. also phenomenal dancer. <laughs> Oh, she's great. Oh, the show is, oh yeah, these two girls, Lele and Gabrielle Green, they're so dynamite together. And I'm so blown away by how they quickly found their energy. And the show is so funny. Like it's a kid's show, but I think adults will probably end up having a great time and cracking up too. Yeah. I really yeah. do. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's really funny. I really, really enjoyed it. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. I, I also wanted to circle back. I know you've been doing stand up for quite a while. I think it was 1997 that you started yeah, after, like after the military. Years. Yeah, like 27 years I've been doing it. And, and the way that you jumped into it was just marvelous. I, I, from what I heard, you were doing open mics in Maryland for about six weeks. Yes. And then the USO tour came with Harlan Williams and, uh, and some yes. others. Yeah. And, and you have to do five minutes. And, and from there, it just kind of sucked. That was in. it. Like, literally, that was it. They asked me to do that. And the moment that I did, I started on working with them. It, it, it was, I, be, I was a comedian. From that moment on, I was a comic. And I was like, I'm hooked. And this is what I want to do. And I never stopped since then. I've never stopped. That's, that's so cool. And then was it around 2000, yeah. 2001 when you ended up going to LA and when you made the move? Um, no, I came to LA in 1990, the end of 98, the middle of 98. Oh, okay. And then okay. I, okay. and then I, uh, really started like showing up doing stuff. I got picked up as a pay regular at the comedy store. And I think that was in 1999. And that's where I started like laying root comedic roots here in LA it was like 1999. Got it. And, and yeah. also you very modest of you. You didn't just get picked up at the comedy store. You got immediately main stage from which, which yes. is, is a very, very big. I think Eddie Griffin was the last person before you to get. Straight you have to the done main stage. a lot of research. You are the most <laughs> thorough person I've ever spoke to in my life about my career. You remember <laughs> stuff that I don't remember. And what's crazy is, yes, that is true. I did get picked up at the comedy store my very first time I showcased for Mitzi. I got picked up and I got put straight into the main room, which I, because I had never been to LA, I didn't know anything about the comedy store. I didn't know anything about the uh -huh. comedy history of anything. I was so green. That I thought that that's just what was normal. You went and performed for Bitsy and then you went and performed. I didn't know there was a tier system like, oh, the, the main room, the belly room, the OR. I didn't know any of that. So when people used to, when I first got picked up, every time I went on stage, all the comedians would rush into the room to watch me perform. And I just thought these were very supportive people. But <laughs> I didn't realize that they were like looking at me like, who the hell is this guy? that Mitzi picked up and put her straight into the main room. I had no idea that that was even the case until probably eight, nine years later. Oh my gosh. That is so funny. I was just doing <laughs> comedy. I had to be doing comedy. <laughs> That's hilarious. like, literally I was just like, okay, I guess everybody's going to the main room. <laughs> oh no. So, and obviously it's been amazing, uh, an amazing journey for you as a comedian. I, I also wanted to ask the writing, when did the writing start to, or, or being a writer in, on shows? Cause you've done, I mean, quite a few, I know Fuller House. And yeah. Amongst um, yeah. I started writing, um, professionally on meet the Browns and house of pain, Tyler Perry's house of pain and meet the Browns. And I, that was 2008. So I've started okay. writing professionally okay. in 2008. Before that, I had done punch up on comedian shows here. Like I did the Tony Rock project and I helped write 
that show and write sketches and do things like that. But like starting to write scripted narrative shows, that was 2008 Meet the Browns. And I did that in House of Pain. And then it just, just kept going. I mean, I just kept getting other jobs and, you know, it was, it was, it was making me money when my standup wasn't. So Mm. I took it, you know? Yeah. And it's so funny well, not funny. It's actually horrible that for, for standups, I feel like it's just such a constant grind throughout the whole entire yes. process. And I feel like yes. the, the ones that are really resourceful and the ones that, um, are able to do it, take on something else. It's like a stand up plus one where you become a writer or you yes. act More or skills. whatever. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I, and I got lucky that I was able to that I'm able to write that I make because a lot of people can't write a lot of comedians can't write narrative or they don't really know how to you know because it's an art to writing it's completely different has nothing to do with just being funny you know because when I started writing out a lot of friends and comedians were like you know hey man I'm funny put me on but I'm like it has nothing to do with being funny you got to be able to tell a story you got to be able to you know know how to plant and write three you know how to how to plan a story and you know, and, and, and progress a story and write and create characters that are three dimensional characters, which is, I don't know where I got the skill from. I didn't take a class. I didn't do anything. I just, you know, yeah. I just started writing and it just came out of me, you know, but yeah, I started doing that in 2008 is when I started writing professionally. And I would have never thought that today I would have my own show that I created on television. Yeah. I think it's kind of dope. It's kind of dope. That is, oh, that's that's so cool to think about. And especially, I mean, man, when the pandemic hit and people I mean. weren't really able to perform or, or perform yes. live. I mean, having that is, I'm sure it was, was very useful and great financially. Well, that's when I got the busiest. That's, that's when I got the busiest. When the pandemic hit, I literally started developing five TV shows and writing TV shows at the top of the pandemic. So I had never been that busy in my life than I was when the pandemic started. Like it literally started in April for me. And I just, and it just kept going. And I was like, I can't believe that I'm literally writing three different TV shows right now. And everybody, you know, as a comedian, it could not have been better because I never felt the pressure of having to go out on the road and I could, I lost all my work and all my jobs went away. Cause I had more to offer and more skills that I could use mm-hmm. than just doing the end of standup. So it worked out for me really, really well. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, well, David, thank you so much for giving us a little bit of insight, flashing the Arnold light and letting us in. Um, we're going to, oh, we're going to, no, man, it's, it's great. I, I mean, I love, I love standup. I love the art of standup. You know, it's probably why I started teaching my standup class 10 years ago and how it became the largest standup comedy class in the country is because it comes from a place of me literally genuinely loving standup and I love the art of it. So I can talk comedy all day long. Like seriously, I love it. And I, I, Forgot to even mention that, but you also do a master class. I, I saw some alumni from it. Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but I thought I saw Jackie Fabulous, Tony Baker, yeah. among yeah. other other great yeah. comedians. There's a lot of people. Uh, Zaynab Johnson, who is on uh, uh, what's the show she's on? I, she's on an NBC show. But there's a lot of people who have come out of there and done really well. And I'm not saying they did well because they took my class. I'm just I just had the pleasure of working mm-hmm. with some of these people as when they were on their journey to where they were going, where they were going, they were going, but yeah, man, the class yeah. is the art of stand-up comedy is yeah. It's been a dope, it's been a dope experience for me. And it's made me a better stand-up to be honest with you. Yeah, absolutely. You, I feel like right now you've got the look for ultimate masterclass teacher. Those are the teaching glasses or do you have different ones? Oh, I have tons of <laughs> <laughs> There's other boss. Oh man, I feel like I'm about to learn about some punchlines. This is great. This is great. 
<laughs> it almost it makes me a little I, I'm a little jealous too because every pair of sunglasses I, obviously they've been picked but they look great on you where me <laughs> I, I don't I, I'm not a, a glasses guy but a hat guy I tried to be and every time I try oh, a yeah. hat my head is just so gigantic it doesn't look good at all so that's hilarious you will grow into it don't worry <laughs> you'll find it you'll find it <laughs> we'll, we'll find something for me oh, man. I'm just gonna it. end up I'm going to end up with one of those caps with the little propeller on the back. I think that's going to be my thing. Ah! So... <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, David, we're going to wind down by giving some advice, answering some questions. We've okay. got only a couple. But um, okay. before before okay. we answer questions, I actually – I like I'm – I'm a quote guy, an inspirational quote guy. When I'm feeling down, I like a little uh, – well, maybe Dr. Seuss is out because he's canceled. Um Babe Ruth? Is he still valid? I don't know. Um, I guess I haven't heard anything about Babe Ruth, but I okay. guess let's, okay. I'm with it. I'm with it. There, there, yeah, yeah, you get you get the picture. So I like inspirational quotes and I like to ask my guests if they've got one, great. If not, but do you have any inspirational quotes, David, that you like to um, yes. go back to when you're having yes. a tough time? Yes, here's one. This is it right here. This one oh. here says. Do what you do so well that those who see you do what you do are going to come back to see you do it again and tell others they should see you do what you do. And this is Walt Disney. That Dang. is my one of my favorite quotes is that you want to be so good at what you do that when people see you do it, they want to come see you do it again and tell other people they should come and see you do what you do. And I thought that was the epitome of being good, being that's how good you want to be at whatever it is you do. And to me, that is how, that is why my social media goes because people see it, they like it, they watch more and they take it and they forward it to other people. They repost it, they retweet it. It's so good, I got to share this. Same thing with stand up. It's so good that people go, you got to go see this dude perform and they bring people. That's the goal. And so that is my quote. That's my inspirational quote. Oh, man. I'm going to take that one and digest it slowly because I feel like it's so good. Yeah, it's especially right. it's really good. Oh, God. That's uh, man. I don't I feel like I don't have room for lunch anymore. That's so good. It's <laughs> it's, it's it makes me think because sometimes whether I'm trying to post something that I think is good on social media or even the comedy work that I do or even work for my day job. It's like, uh, well, maybe that is a little different, but you want to make sure that yeah. it's so good that people they're talking about you, they're coming back. And I think coming out, coming at it with that frame of mind changes things yes. a little bit where it's like, Oh, I'm just yes. posting this silly thing. It's like, no, I'm yes. posting this and people love it. So that's right. That's exactly what, and that's what you want. You want people to love what you do and you want to love what you do so that you get there without even knowing that, oh, this is, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to get there. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. For sure. Well, you, that's great. That, that, that may have been David, one of the top 10 quotes of <laughs> this whole podcast. So congratulations. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, you also, it's really you, you got an A also for um, the design and the and the aesthetics of it. It was framed and everything. So that was yeah, it's pretty good, right? <laughs> it was almost likely staged. This this is you know, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> you're the first person who's ever asked me that, and I was like, yeah, I can tell you about this. Yeah, so that that like is just right there, and I look at it all the time. Oh. I'm so glad I asked. That's th that's another thing too. I feel like that's what I need. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm reading this book called The Artist's Way that is changing my life. And one of the things yeah. in it is you take something like positive reinforcement or something that somebody said that's that's helped encourage you with your creativity and you frame it and you put it somewhere where you can see it. And I what? feel like- that that's whether it's an inspirational quote or whatever, something that can help inspire you should be visible to you so that when you lose your, when you lose sight of what's important, it's right there. Bam. Exactly. So agree. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what these, that's all of these things back here are things that have some type of meaning like that for me. Everything on the wall behind me has a meaning in a story because it's somehow, 
locked into my journey and an inspiration, you know, to my journey of what I want to do. For that sure. is so cool. It, yeah. Meanwhile, mine is just a bunch of sound panels that are totally blank that they just absorb every good idea that I have. It's just like sucks it in and then it's no That's longer hilarious. there. So, but <laughs> no, it's going to be great. It's going to be, it'll, it'll be absorbed with wisdom and knowledge and eventually everything that you're doing. It just, it just creates continuous great vibes. That's all. Cause if you keep putting it out there, it just keeps coming back to you. That's exactly what I believe. You keep putting out good work. You keep doing good stand up. All of the stuff that goes along with doing that comes back to you. Oh, so good. I, you know, I was feeling a little down today, but now I feel it, today's a great day. It's, it's, oh, uh, great. I, this was, I didn't know it was going to be so inspirational this episode, but I'm this feeling great. Yeah. I'm feeling good. I love All that. All right. Well, we are, we are about to jump into some questions here from Reddit. Okay. Um, this one, the, it says, <clears throat> I catfished my ex and accidentally formed a relationship with his best friend. My ex blocked me on everything, so I made a fake account, which was extremely believable. His friend DM'd me, and now I really like him, and he really likes me, but he doesn't know I'm catfishing him, and I really want to tell him, but I have no idea how. Help. What? <laughs> <laughs> like... Whoever's doing this, there's something wrong with them, period. Like the moment you start building a relationship with somebody, like in a fake name, it shows that there's something wrong with you. You're not even in a position to get into a relationship that's healthy because your approach to it is already ridiculous. Like, oh. I don't even know what to say to that person. Like that, you so so you so somebody has met somebody who they really don't even know. I, none of none of the best thing for her to do or him to do is to delete that account and stop talking to both of these people and move on because there you can't salvage that. You built an entire thing on a lie. If you built an entire thing on a lie, like where you we expect to what do you expect to happen? Right, right, like, exactly. How, and and even, you know I don't even get that. I know, I know. And and I think, I think as a society, we're taught by some of the movies of the past that you can start something on a lie and then you, oh, I'm a prince and that you're not a prince, but you keep that ruse going and right. then you lie. There's some, there's some conflict, but then you guys make up that right. story about being a prince is more sane than catfishing your ex and getting with your best friend, his best friend. Yeah, that's, that's all of that is bad. All of that is all that is ridiculous. too much. All that shows you're crazy. All that shows exactly. That you're out of your mind. That's all that shows. And like you can fake. I don't know that you can say I'm a prince and then we find out you're regular. Ain't nobody gonna do that. But I think you can say you're regular and then they find out you're a prince and it's acceptable because now we're talking about money and lifestyle and course all can be forgiven if i'm only living in a castle but you can't tell me i'm gonna be living in a castle and then i meet you and we living in the studio that ain't gonna work i can go that's, up with you but true. i can't go down <laughs> that's true you know what was it and you made a great point of this in fat ballerina too where you were saying when guys are talking about hey i got this girl for you they're like yes. the first question is what do they look like she look girls like? are like what does he do? What if he's he a do? prince. That's, that's right. That's uh, a and, prince? and I, think, oh. <laughs> I think it was Aladdin where Jasmine had lied to Aladdin that she was not a princess. And then Aladdin wished to be a prince. And then they both ended up happily married after that. So that didn't work. Well, but he eventually became up to her level. Yes. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Because she had the power. That's why that. that worked. That's why that's that right. worked. That's this power. Okay. That's All right. Well, I feel like I feel like this person has some good solid advice. Start completely over and start over. something on a truth. Oh. Yes. All right. <laughs> this this last question here from Reddit, submitted by a fan, actually, it says, "My twenty year old son decided he's not going to date anyone until he is twenty five. What should I do? He wants to date older people, but I told him he's not mature enough to handle adult relationships and that the brain isn't fully developed until 25. So he decided not to date anyone until he's 25. But I never said he couldn't date anyone. What should I do? 
Sorry for that run-on sentence. That was that was quite long. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> sounds like to me, you need to let your son figure out his own way. It sounds like to me, you're in the way, like trying to dictate what he does and when and now. And then you got to, at, at some point, you got to let him do what they want to do. At some point, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have the... You don't have the, 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 you're not in the driver's seat anymore. 20, anything. Yes. The kids are not developed or brains aren't developed to 25, but that don't mean you can't date nobody today. That don't mean you should sit in the house and not do nothing. Maybe you don't make no major decisions. Maybe you don't get married before then. You know what I mean? But like yes. dating and figuring out what I like, what I don't like before I lock into something Ain't wrong with that. I, that sounds like a controlling mother that, or, or, or parent that said some shit and their kid took it to heart. And now they want to try to control them back the other way and make them do what they want to do. How about you leave this child alone and figure out why your life is like, why your life is like it is. And why are you telling somebody else what to do? Like, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Like what the I, hell are you talking about? <laughs> Get out I of like here. <laughs> that's so ridiculous. I like that perspective. That's a that's good perspective. I, I also, I like how, because that's what I had heard was 25 is when the brain fully develops, but like, which part yeah, of the brain is true. not fully developed? Is it like the, a useless part of, um, oh, learning how to really surf I well? I think it's the part or, that, they, yeah, I, <laughs> I think it's the part that makes you uh, one, like the, the ability to have reasoning 360 to be able to run something all the way through, to be able to see all perspectives of everything. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. I think because mine didn't develop till I was 40. So I know for sure that uh, <laughs> 25 is, is, is young. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> and, and, and the second question is, I don't think if they're going to wait until 25, I don't think that's bad at all for you, even where you don't have to deal with, the boyfriends or girlfriends coming in before 25. You don't, you yep. don't even have to you, yep. you got to deal with them in and out. You got to deal with navigating with those young relationships because they all dramatic and ridiculous. So you ain't got to deal with none of that as a parent. If my daughter said, I'm going to wait till I'm 25, I've been like, good. That gives me <laughs> till you 25 to get my attitude together. Cause my attitude going to be bad. Cause you, cause I know some choices is going to be the bullshit. So I know already how to, uh, how to navigate that. It gives me time to navigate that world. Oh, beautiful. Well, great, great advice for this person and great advice overall. Wow. David, we've, we've reached the end of the podcast, but first off, I just want to say a huge thank you for jumping on the pod and oh, gracing thanks, us man, with you. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. And I also wanted to ask, you know, we talked a little bit about it, but what have you got going on? Where can people follow you? Um, what would you like to plug? Um, well, you can follow me. Uh, if you put in David A. Arnold, you got to put in the A. If you don't, you're going to get the white guy that does the soundtracks for James Bond. That's David Arnold. That's not me. You put in David A. Arnold and you will find me. I'm in the middle of a 20 city tour as I get ready to prepare to film my next Netflix special in January. Um, so, you know, if you go to davidarnold.com, you can see all my dates and where I'm going to be. I know I'm in New York this weekend. I'm in Atlanta the week after. Uh, so I'm performing everywhere and, uh, you know, check out my TV show. If you got kids or people who, who like kids TV, check out that girl LA on Nickelodeon Thursday nights at seven 30 for Pacific time. And, you know, follow me, follow me on all the platforms, man. And get ready to watch this journey to this next stand up special, because I'm very excited about this material and about this new hour. It's really, really great. It's fantastic. Oh man. That is fantastic. All the links are going to be in the show notes too. And I'm super excited to see you in Phoenix, October 21st through yes. the 23rd. 23rd. Um, so I will be at the Improv. Yes. At the Tempe Improv. I'm very excited about being there. It's going to be great. What a decadent episode with David A. Arnold. Thank you guys so much for making it all the way through. I'm glad we finished together. And if you guys haven't had the chance while you were listening to the episode, because I know you were just so drilled in to us, you were so inside me. I was inside of you in some capacity. And so I feel intimacy was sparked. Or I don't know, maybe it was a one pod stand. Maybe, who knows? But if it wasn't, you know, I'd like to hear from you again. So leave a review on Apple Podcasts, super important. And if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, 
Facebook, wherever. I'm going to have the link to the show notes there. It's all, it's like one handy link. It's a link tree. That's what I've become. If my grandpa was like, oh, you make a trees. Like, no, I make link trees. So they just sprout links where you can see more of me talking about my life. And he would walk away very disappointed. So I'm kind of glad grandpa's dead in this case. But anyway, guys, thank you so much. Love y'all. Don't forget to see Trash or Treasure. Don't forget to go see David A. Arnold live. And uh, check out a couple more episodes if you want to. I've got some good ones. Hannah Burner was a great one. Pete Lee, Ali Sadiq. Some, some really good stars that you might have seen on Comedy Central or Bravo Summer House or Instagram or TikTok, wherever, you know? Got a great lineup here. So you guys, and it's all because of you guys. You guys have helped me. It's, you've lifted me up like Pinocchio. You've given me life and allowed me to live life as a real boy. So thank you. Love you. Gooch smooch. Bye-bye.